the 2K Sports pregame show. The NBA season is in high gear, and we are so glad to have you here with us on 2K Sports. I'm Ernie Johnson. Uh, my companions are Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Tonight we'll see the Washington Wizards playing against the Hornets out in Charlotte. Taking a look at the Hornets, with a record of 3-7 and seven over their last 10 games, they have been struggling. Wins hard to come by. We'll see if they can grab one tonight. The Hornets don't have a lot of three-point threats, and subsequently last season didn't really punish teams from deep. Kenny, you think this team can go deep in the playoffs without having a, a strong game from the outside? I don't know, Ernie, because it, it's very hard to succeed in the NBA without any sharpshooters. Think about this, Ernie. The final five teams in the playoffs last year were the five teams that took the most threes. Exactly. Charlotte was dead last in the league last year in three-point percentage, 31.8% and they showed up in the standings. It reminded of myself on the free throw line. They stink. Well, it wasn't no, it, it that was, bad. You were yeah, good in the clutch. It was bad. It you was were good bad. in the clutch, though. It was bad. They were not good in the clutch. You were. That's my point. It, it, was, was, very, it was very nice of you to, to have his back. I'm just that keeping was it great. right, not yeah. real. All right. Uh, uh, let's go to Kevin Harlan, who always does both of those things. everyone from Charlotte as we bring you an Eastern Conference contest live from the Time Warner Cable Arena. Thanks for joining us as we get set to bring you NBA basketball on 2K Sports. I'm Kevin Harlan and here with me today Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. So off the tip, it's Washington's ball. So a look at the starters for the Wizards. The talented Wall and Beal team up in the backcourt. Porter is out there with Gortat, and it's Mahimi in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. Oh, oh good D, but better O. Oh, it's almost as if they're just standing there. Well said. Uh, well, for the most part, they were just uh, standing still, Clark. And you know what, Kevin? He's not the most explosive player on the court. But if you give him a clear lane to the basket, he'll punch it on you. Special thanks to Kia for that sweet Kia slam cam replay. And it's Hibbert missing. Last season, the Charlotte Hornets had a dreadful offense. Worst effective field goal percentage clock in the league. Effective field goal percentage being your field goal percentage with the value of the shot back in. Again, more, more analytics for us to look at. Yeah, and this is a way to break down that analytic in an abbreviated fashion. E field goal percentage is a pretty good indicator of how good your offense is. Right through the D for the layup. We play just over a minute here in the first. Walker against Wall feeds to Porter. To the middle, there's a good screen. Mahimi passes to Porter. Got a piece of it, and it's Otto Porter with the foul. That's his first foul. And here are the Hornets now, outplayed in the previous game on their schedule, losing to Sacramento. And I don't care how much you grind it out defensively. When you shoot it that poorly, you're going to struggle to win games. Well, it's not only going to be a struggle, it's going to be virtually impossible if you shoot as poorly as they did. Land dishes to Batum. Here's Hibbert. Rebound, Washington. They defeated Indiana in their last game. Yeah, the bench production in that game was terrific points from multiple sources. Yeah, everybody that stepped on the floor played and made a contribution, and that's always a positive thing. And it's Mahimi finishing it off. The one-hand slam is so sweet when it's his hand doing the slam. Oh, yeah, he is so smooth, even on a power finish like that. And really, that's what makes him unique, that combination of power and polish. 
Back to Walker. Six on the shot clock. Shoots. And again, the Hornets missing. Wizards leading by four. Now it's in it down to Doris Burke, who was able to talk with head coach Steve Clifford. We talked about some of the matchups he'll be watching in this game, and he told me, quote, I'll be looking at how we deal with Marcin Gortat. He's a guy who can score in any number of ways, posting up, pulling up from outside, or rolling to the rim. And he's also a factor on the glass. Guys, Gortat might not be a household name, but he's an impact big man in this league, no question. Thanks, Doris. Here's Lamb. Here's Hibbert. Gortat with the block. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touched by Gorta. Batum sets a screen for Lamb. Over in the corner, Williams passes it to Walker. Puts up a three. And they've done a nice job controlling the defensive backboard to start this game. Not one second chance bucket allowed. That is finishing off good defense. It's tipped. Taken away by Williams. And a fast break now for the Hornets. Walker leading the charge. Rejected by Wall. To the wing right side. Porter kicks to Gortat. Pass to Wall. Here's Beal. And that comes off the assist by John Wall. That's seven points here for Beal. And their offense already in a flow. Some stellar shooting to jump out to this league. Quality looks they're getting, and they're capitalizing on them, guys. They have to be happy with this start offensively. Washington leading now by seven. Wall passes to Beal. Back the wall. Goes up with a stripe. Another shot. Gortat dishes to Mahini. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. And let's quickly check out the scoring breakdown here for the Wizards. And so far, these guys have done a fantastic job finding the open man and getting some easy baskets. They've established their presence in the paint tonight. Also, a lot of their scoring to this point coming from down low. And the Hornets making a change here. Zeller's checked in. He's off on the second. Despite an overall strong year in 2015 for the Wizards, they were pretty weak at times on the road. Managed only 17 wins away from home, tied the Pelicans for the fewest road wins for any team that actually made the playoffs last year. Morris has checked in for Washington. Pick by Zeller. Now here's Lamb. He's covered by Beal. And Lamb kicks to Zeller. Just five to shoot. Zeller setting the pick with a two. Lamb, good. Lamb's got his first bucket of the night. And for the Wizards and their road problems, a lot of it came from their inability to defend the three. I mean, they were in the bottom third in the league at defending the three as the road team. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. It's on Nicholas Batum. And you know what's odd about the Wizards' road problems is that they play outstanding defense otherwise. I mean, compared to 2014, they definitely took a step backwards in regards to their road play last season. The Wizards shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. And the first one at the line is good. After making it to the playoffs in 2014, the Hornets couldn't repeat the feat in 2015. A slow start probably, Greg, more than anything else did him in. Really disappointing season coming in with such high expectations. And 33 and 49, just not good enough to get into the playoffs in any season. That misses, so he splits the free throws. You know, for the Hornets, they've not made consecutive playoff appearances since the team moved to New Orleans back in 2002. They just haven't been able to stay consistent enough to make it to the playoffs back-to-back -back year. 
he got a great read of where that miss was going, and that allowed him to be the first guy to it and get the foot back. Wall draws the double, and a wide open look for Thornton. And that comes off the assist by John Wall. Wall's got four assists in the game. And guys, what's rough for the Hornets is that they were a consistent playoff fixture in the late 90s. Still, the team has never made it to the conference finals in its franchise history, and that should be a goal for them in the coming years. There's the pass to Gorton. Screened by Smith. It's stolen by Kaminsky. Fast break now for Charlotte. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. That's on Marcin Gortat. And guys, Nicholas Batum is a real greyhound on the floor. The guy's got long strides, runs fast, long and limber. Clark, he, he covers a lot of ground. Extremely active at both ends of the court, Kevin. Great versatility. He can defend three positions, and he's played big minutes for the Blazers. And guys, now the NBA has what's called player tracking. I mean, they can show how much ground a player can cover over the course of a season. And, and Nicholas Batum, always amongst the leaders, two seasons ago, he was number one. Sessions checked in for Kemba Walker. The Wizards also changing it up. Nicholson comes in for Gortat. And it's Burke in for John Wall. And, and Batum with, with that slender bill. You know, you like his height and length. But he, he can get pushed around at times. I, I, I think he could still stand to add some strength. So timeout called here. The first for Washington. And, and Nicholas Batum injuring his wrist last season. He was pushed in the back by Larry Sanders on a dunk and, and went down hard. Gilchrist has checked in. Wizards leading by four. We saw that wrist bother Batum all season long. His shooting numbers down drastically. Clark, a major blow for him. And you know what? The league might have to look at that. I mean, Sanders got a one-game suspension, but is that really enough to discourage that kind of reckless foul? It's a thin line, but I think it's worth uh, further. Sessions passes to Bellinelli. Kaminsky with the ball. Now Smith defending. Zeller setting the pick for Sessions to the middle. And the dunk by Zeller. Pretty, pretty passing. Timely recognition as to where the open man was. Washington's gone 2-2 two two from three-point range here in the first quarter. Morris against Kid Gilchrist. The 11-footer rebounded by Kaminsky. Not pretty. You just got to shake off a miss like that. Gordon against Sessions. Can't tie it up as that one misses. The Wizards with the lead. Morris outside, beyond the arc. That one goes, coming. These defenders had better start closing out on those shooters. That's two in a row, and we call that a streak. And the basket good. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And when you make five in a row in close like that, it also takes pressure off your perimeter guys, too. Screen by Smith. Burke dishes to Thornton. Pass to Smith. Out to the right wing. Burke just time on the clock. Pass and it's Smith with the assist that time. Burke's got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. Here's Sessions. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Outside, Bellinelli, and that one's good. Only took them a few seconds to answer the three ball with one of their own. Greg, we've got a three-point battle taking shape here. And 
Here's Burke. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Two years ago, Utah drafted Trey Burke to be their point guard of the future. Then last year, they drafted Dante Exum. It set up quite a competition between those two. The Wizards have gone two of four at the free throw line. Really hasn't come together for them as a group in terms of free throw shooting, just around 70% on break. the season. Guys, their free throw shooting has slipped a bit since last year, but not really to the point where they should be overly concerned about it. And he makes the first. Getting back to the Burke Exum rivalry last year, both young men showed some tremendous promise, yet both shot under 37% from the field. Greg, that's got to improve. And it will. I mean, last season was tough for both guys in terms of getting used to a certain role. But, but remember also, when you come into this league, a league of men, and you're that young and you haven't matured, it's going to take you maybe two or three years before you can find that consistency. And then also factor in both are getting yanked in and out of the lineup. Tough challenge for those young players as they dealt with the ebbs and flow of their confidence. Now here's Sessions. Defense is right there. Fires from 14. And Charlotte again with the bucket. I love how he used his height advantage on that shot. And he had the nice, soft touch with it, too. And, you know, guys, Marco Bellinelli really hit his stride two seasons ago. He was way up across the board as a shooter and assist man. Even his rebounding had improved over his career averages. But then last year, he took a bit of a step back. Time called here. The Wizards decide to talk it over. Talking about Bellinelli, he won the NBA three-point shootout back in 2014. Looked like he'd uh, perfected his stroke. That gave him, Greg, confidence in every other part of his game. Yeah, and talent is one thing, but, but confidence truly does trump almost everything else. And he just didn't seem to have it last season. But, but he has that craftiness and high-level skill set to really bounce back this year and prove that he's the real deal. Wizards leading by three. Burke with it. Five points in the game. Screen by Smith. And Thornton kicks to Smith. Layup off the pick. A second chance effort, and it's good. Yeah, they got that one, but early on, it's, it's really been a struggle for them to secure that defensive back row. And because it's still early, I wouldn't read too much into it. There's still a lot of game left. Now here's Sessions. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. Releases. Not enough on that one as it misses. No breathing room at all to take that shot. Burke, the pass to Smith. They set the pick on the wing court. And again, Washington, no good. And with room like that off the pick, you have got to knock that one down. Well, you know, they did everything right, Greg. They executed. All you want is a good look at the basket. Sometimes the shots just don't fall. Bellinelli dishes to Zeller. And the foul called on Jason Smith. That is his first foul of the game. You know, and, and for Cody Zeller, after that promising rookie campaign, he just did not tear it up in year two. In fact, his production only improved slightly. But, but that was mostly due to the increase in playing time. Talented guy, no doubt, just still trying to find his way in the league. And now the first timeout called here for the Hornets. And for Cody Zeller, Greg, there's a reason he was the fourth overall pick back in 2013. He showed the size and athleticism to be a difference maker in college and Clark now he has to do it at the pro level as well I think he was pretty confident he can yeah I'm agreeing with those folks myself because he does have the tools it's now a matter of transitioning and becoming a little better shooting the ball than he's shown outside Bellinelli rebound by Smith Smith's got his third rebound on the night. Down low. It's deflected. 
And Sessions with a clear path to the hoop. Great anticipation and awareness to come up with the steal and trigger the fast break. And now just a one-possession game thanks to that quick hitter. Outstanding play in the open court. Her kicks to Thornton. Nice ball movement by Washington. Near the three-point line, it's Morris. And the rebound goes to the Hornets. First chance of the season for them to go up against this Wizards team. Two division rivals facing off tonight. They'll see one another four times this season. This is definitely the first of many tonight. And in these first games, you always try to set the tone and take that mental and psychological edge. And, and Kit Gilchrist had that very funky jumper coming into the Shoot league. Two. And prior Shoot to two. last year, it really worked tirelessly. Uh, not an easy thing to do to try to change the entire form and structure of your jump shot. That free throw missing. Clark for Kid Gilchrist and his shot. It seemed to be a step in the right direction for his entire offensive game. Well, Kevin, it was the first year of reworking that jump shot, and the mid-range percentage has gone up as a result. That's positive progress. Roy Hibbert's checked in for Charlotte. Mahimi's checked in for Washington. Beal comes in for Markeith Morris. And when you think of Kid Gilchrist, one thing that comes to mind is intangibles. He has a desire and intensity and will to win that elevates him to elite status. Yeah, you know, he never will be a great shooter. And he's still working on his jump shot. But the intangibles, you talked about it. You add heart and tenacity to that. Every team wants a guy like that. Never with the screen. There's 47 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. Nobody near Kid Gilchrist. A shot, no good. And Washington the other way now. And talking about Kid Gilchrist, yes, he's worked to fix his shooting form last season, but the real improvement was made on the board. He averaged seven and a half rebounds a game in only 29 minutes of play. That is outstanding. Offensively, it's been a perfect quarter for him. He hasn't missed a single shot. And some changes here for the Hornets. Williams comes in for Kaminsky. And Jeremy Lamb subbed in for Bellinelli. And then for Washington, Gortat's checked in for Nicholson. And John Wall subbed in for Marcus Thornton. Free throw good, Beal. Hornets trail by six. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. It's Kid Gilchrist on the wing. He's covered by Beal. Dishes it to Sessions. And once again, off the mark by Charlotte. Here's Wall. It's good. The assist that time from Burke. Burke's got his third assist on the night. Wow, that's a really smooth finish. That's why we and they always love seeing him at the end of those breaks. He makes it look fun and easy. And that does it for the first quarter. It's the Wizards. They lead by eight. And the second quarter about to get started. We'll be back in just a moment. And John Wall spoke prior to the game. He talked about the identity of the Wizards team. Defensively, just being that gritty and grimy team that uh, makes it tough for teams to score in the paint, uh, I think we can be a very great team. The Wizards not exactly Clark, the first team that you think of when it comes to gritty and grimy team defense, but maybe he's really got a point here in how tough the Washington defense can be. Well, it's been good enough to have taken them further than most thought they'd go. And you don't get there without the defense, Kevin. You know that. I'm really impressed, though, with Wall's mindset in all of that. And the first quarter is in the books. Second about ready to get underway. And what stands out to you from Washington in this one? The roof is up right now, guys. It's raining in here. A lot of threes through the first. Hey, sometimes in the range of fours, and they have not let up from beyond the arc. They've got Roy Hibbert. 
Marvin Williams is out there with Batum. There's Jeremy Lamb. And it's Walker in at the one spot. So that's the Hornets five. Really left alone that time. Williams has got five points now this quarter. Wizards leading by three. Al Beal. His last outing, he had 18 points. It's Porter outside. And again, Washington with the triple. You know, there's no better sign of how efficiently a team is operating than their assist number. And theirs are fantastic. Just beautiful when they play the game like this. Walker against Wall. Here's Hibbert. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against Sacramento. And also three steals. So he, he showed some grit and determination on the defensive side. Washington's gone along perfectly from three-point range. Tonight, they've gone five for five. There's a screen by Gorton. Wall passes to Porter. Out to the right wing. Hibbert on the double team. Beal, that's for two. Hibbert pulls it in. Hornets trail by six. Oh, and here we go. Wall's got it. The pass break chance. And Hibbert with the block. And there's the call on Marchin Gorchuk. That'll be his second foul of the game. Cody Zeller's checked in for Roy Hibbert. Then for the Wizards, Jason Smith comes in for Mahimi. And Morris subbed in for B. Charlotte shooting at a decent 44% clip here. Walker dishes to land. Charlotte moving the ball around. And Walker kicks to Zeller. The shot is off. Burjot with the defensive effort. Washington leading now by six. Stolen by Walker. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on John Wall. That's his first foul. The Hornets have gone two or three from the field here to open the second quarter. Walker against Wall. There's a good screen. Williams passes to Walker. Six to shoot. The Hornets need to get a shot off here. Charlotte no good that time either. The defense better not make a habit of giving him that shot. I mean, he doesn't miss many of them. Well, we know Washington didn't win the Southeast last season. They came in second once again. This time to the Hawks and not to Miami. Still, I thought they were dominant within the division. Matter of fact, they were dominant within the division. It's stolen by Lamb. And a fast break now for the Hornets. Walker's running. That's good. And it's seven points for Williams. And he has really come to life here after a slow start in that first quarter. Walker against Wall. Screened by Smith. Here's Porter. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Wizards were very strong against the rest of their division, the Southeast Division. 10 and 6 in division record for them. And it seems the Wizards are always the bridesmaids, doesn't it? I mean, never the bride, it seems. Right. Since the Southeast came about in 2004, they've had six second place finishes, but have yet to win a division title. Amazing. And it's Walker penetrating, kicks it to Williams. Again, the Hornets score. And here's Wall. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against Indiana. But his passing just blew me away. I mean, to see him operate their offense that way was a breath of fresh air. Burchot dishes to Porter. And the Wizards hit again from deep. You, you, how can you forget about him? I mean, he's not going to miss that open of a look. Here's Williams. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. Walker's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. So it's Washington now. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. It's off to Boston for him after this game as they take on the Celtics. That will conclude their brief two-game road trip. In the corner, it's Morris. The dish to Smith. 
Lamb. He kicks to Gortat. There's the double team with Lamb. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. And for Marcin Gortat, he was such a good fit for the Wizards last season. Actually, the last two seasons. You know, he, he runs the floor very well for his size. A terrific finisher, solid in the pick and roll, can make the mid-range. You know, he's been one of the more consistent centers in our league. You know, getting back to Gortat, he signed that five-year, $60 million contract a couple of years back. Raised some eyebrows at the time because he's not a supreme athlete. But his size, effort, and refined skill set have made him worth it so far. Kaminsky is checked in for Charlotte. Bellinelli comes in for Lamb. The Wizards also changing it up. Nicholson's checked in for Jason Smith. And it's Thornton in for Morris. And talking about Gortat, I, I like what he can do for you defensively. Doesn't really have a vertical, but uses his length and timing to alter shots. And he moves his feet well enough to close out on shooters and also cover the pick and roll. So solid and complete in terms of a frontline player. Kemba Walker with an eerily similar season once again. Stats the last three years have ironically been very close. Yeah, you talked about those three years. Almost 18 points a game, around 35 minutes. So did so on just under 16 shots as well. So becoming more and more efficient. So Walker nails both of them. You know, it's kind of one of those weird anomalies when you look at Kimba's numbers because in each of those seasons, he played a different number of games. Just um, one of those kind of quirky, weird things we pick up on sometimes when our brain is foggy. Hornets trail by six. Outside the two. Now the feed to Bellinelli. Oh, good on the triple. And, and for Walker, guys, and his stats, even for players considered consistent, there is more variation than what Walker has put up. And Wall kicks to Porter. Here's Gortat, and a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. And the thing great about Marcin Gortat, he's not a high flyer. He's not a super flexible athlete. But he's one of the best centers in the league because he's tough. And he's worked hard on developing his skills. And he always, always hustles. Yeah, and he fights for position mm. down low. A, a terrific screener. Does a lot of that dirty work. And he's also very good at passing the basketball. You know, a, a lot more skilled, particularly in the pick and roll, than maybe people give him credit for. He can hurt a defense in a surprising number of ways. And the Hornets making a change here. Sessions is checked in. Good on both. Talking about Gortat, he was a late second round draft choice in 2005. His first four years in the league, highly underwhelming. Now, over the last four years, he's averaged around 13 points, nine rebounds, and one and a half blocks per game. Those are good numbers. Give an assist there, not for the pass, but for the solid screen set on the inside that freed him up and made the layup possible. Outside wall. He feeds it to Gortat. Parked down low that time, and he got the three-second call. With a break in the action, let's see which teams have come away with the most deals in the NBA this season. In third, the Hornets. One of the things that's made this team so effective is their ability to get takeaways. I mean, they do an excellent job defending the ball and also jumping into the passing lanes, and they're all together defensively. That's one of the reasons they're in, amongst the league leaders in steals. Charlotte calls timeout. And, and getting back to Martin Gortat, his dad was a successful light heavyweight boxer in Poland, so clearly you see where the toughness comes from. And, and, and Martin's mom was on the Polish national team in volleyball. So you know where the blocking and ball skills come from. I guess we'd have to call him a chip off the old blocks. Big Gilchrist is checked in for Charlotte. And a switcher also for Washington. Burke, he's checked in for John Wall. Oh. 
Hornets trail by six. Sessions with it. Looking at his point production, he averages almost eight points a game. And it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. No good. Now the Wizards take it the other way. Now here's Burke. Gort's out with a screen on Sessions. Kid Gilchrist with the steal. Now Sessions outside. Bellinelli. That ball is great assist by Lamont Sessions. Bellinelli's got six points. Boy, they're knocking down the long-range shots. A lot of those same shots they missed earlier in the first quarter. They still find themselves down here. They're starting to make some headway into that deficit. That's the three fly. Thornton no good. Oh, that's a tough three-point try when you've got the defense right there. Well, he'd have to be really good to knock down a shot like that against that kind of defense. There's a screen. And Sessions kicks to Kaminsky. He dishes it to Kid Gilchrist. Five on the clock. With the floater, and they get a pass. Wizards leading by three. Here's Burke. From outside, off the mark. Hornets have gone 7 to 13 for the field since the start of the second. And Charlotte had a lot of momentum going into last season off that playoff appearance. But they just stumbled out of the gates last season and spent the whole year playing catch up. Taking it to the rack with power right there. And oh. hammering down with the two handed slam. Just piling on the lead with the dunk like that. Here's Sessions. To the paint. Here's Zeller. Beautiful dish, and the layup goes down. Zeller's got eight points. They have repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and it's paid dividends. And with as many points as they've gotten in the paint, you know, they haven't had to do much work on the perimeter. They set the pick. Horton passes to Porter. High post shot. And he overshot that one, missing. You love the close out on that possession. Excellent defense. Active, and he made it a very tough shot for him. Poor shot with the block. And here's Thornton. Taking a look at his stats, he's averaging around seven and a half points a game. And very little fight put up by the defense as he made his way to the bucket for the jam. They did seem to take the cautious approach, Greg, when it came to defending that one. You're right. And, guys, it's not the time for caution now. I mean, they've got to be aggressive and take some risk to see if they can cut that lead down. Washington calls timeout. Washington's offense last year looked solid on paper, but in reality, it was much tougher to defend against. They could hurt you in a number of ways. And, and the Wizards, Kevin, could get you in transition, but they could also, as you mentioned, they could get you with their half-court sets, top 10 in field goal percentage as well as three-point percentage last season. And, you know, for the Wizards, it wasn't just how they scored, but who scored. I mean, they ended the season with all five starters averaging double-digit points, and that's a rarity. Charlotte making the switch. Hibbert's checked in. Miami's checked in for Washington. Bradley Beal comes in for Porter. Wizards leading by three. And thinking back to the Wizards having all of their starting five scoring in double digits last year, that those are the kinds of teams that coaches hate to plan against. Any given night, one of them can step up and hurt you, and you just couldn't plan for where their points were going to come from. Sessions dishes to Hibbert. Burke grabs the miss. Washington has gone two of four from three-point range so far in the second quarter. Sessions with it. It's Kid Gilchrist on the wing. Charlotte moving the ball around. The shot by Bellinelli. No good. Wizards have gone 6 of 13 so far from the field here in the second quarter. 
And Beal kicks to Thornton. Feeds it to Mahimi. Back to Thornton. Passes it to Beal. Shot clock at six. For the three. Hibbert pulls it in. Hibbert's got three rebounds so far in the game. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far. The score now all even. Seven points for Frank Kaminsky. And when you've got a big man who can shoot from distance like that, what a huge advantage. Now, here's Burke. He's covered by Sessions. There's the screen. And Thornton kicks to Mahimi. And he gets the shot to fall after coming off the pick. Mahimi's got seven. Perfect screen there. Set him up with a terrific look. Yeah, I like the fact that the setup was good. The screen was solid. But you also have to look at the fact that the defender didn't do his job as well as he could have. Yeah, and a dangerous trend here as they're starting to live and die with outside jumps. Really good point, Greg. I mean, you want to keep that balance. And attacking inside creates space for shooters. And having shooters creates opportunities inside. So it works hand in glove. Hibbert kicks to Sessions. Got a hand on it. They retain possession. Here's Kaminsky. They get it again. Outside Kid Gilchrist. And it's Hibbert top of the key. That's tipped. Six seconds separating the shot and game clocks. No luck. And Charlotte will come the other way. Following this one, they get to host the Cavaliers. And he banks in the lane. Hibbert's got his third bucket of the night. Such a strong finisher on the fast break. And Greg, I love the fact he's always in control, even though he's going at breakneck speed, he still maintains his body control. Now, here's Burke. He's got five. Outside for Beal. Here's the foul. It's on Mahini. That is his first foul of the game. Yeah, he was boxed out and tried to get the rebound the only way he could. Yeah, he got straight over the back and on top of him there, too. So, nothing subtle about that one. Tie game here in Charlotte. And a chance now to send you over to Doris Burke standing by on the sideline. Doris? Gentlemen, I'm here with Roy Hibbert. And Roy, what do you think the team needs to do coming up in the second half? I think we need to take care of the ball on the offensive end, um, get back. But um, you got to do a better job of just controlling the pace of the game. You know, you give a little bit of leeway, but uh, I think we can do a better job in that aspect. Roy, as always, we appreciate the time. Gentlemen, back to you. Thank you, Doris. And we'll be back for the third quarter of action following halftime. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome back, everybody. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Ernie Johnson along with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. For Charlotte, it was a challenging first quarter. They gave themselves a lot of work to do by letting the deficit get to as many as nine points in the period. They came out in the second quarter with a lot more energy and with some nice offensive stretches and were able to even things up before the half. Shaq, your thoughts on the Hornets? Well, their perimeter defense has fallen apart. Guys aren't fighting over screens, closing out on shooters. I mean, you know, when you're playing a team that gets this hot from behind the arc, you got to body up on the shooters and try to close them down. Their defense needs to extend outward in the second half. Kenny, what's your take on Washington so far? Well, they didn't let this hostile crowd bother them at all. In fact, they seem to feed off of that hostility. Plus, sometimes when you're away from home, those distractions, your family, your friends, your fans, you can concentrate better. Okay, wait, did I just say my family, friends, and fans are distractions? Okay, uh, let's go to the next thing. Let's go. All right, that is going to wrap up our halftime report as it's just about time for the start of the third quarter. Welcome back, everyone. The second half about to get underway, and it's been a close one so far. What a stellar outing in this one for Williams. 
He has 11 points, and from long range, he's hit one three-pointer. And when it's all said and done, I got a sneaky suspicion he's going to have a few more. And on the floor for Randy Whitman as we get into the second half. The great pair of Wall and Beal are at the guard spots. Gortat is out there with Mahini, and it's Porter at the three side. And, and that's why it's so important to really be a good screening team. You get a lot of open looks from it. And guys, over his first three seasons, no question, Jeremy Lamb has been a major disappointment. Clark, his game simply didn't seem to evolve at all over that time. Well, that's why scouting is an inexact science. You know, he was a major piece in that James Harden trade, Kevin, a few years back, but just hasn't found the traction anticipated for him. Platoon passes to Walker. On the clock, here's Hibbert and the rejection by Mahimi. To the inside, Batum with the steal. Walker goes in, and it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it, we'll shoot one more at the free throw line. Really aggressive play there, taking it to the rack against the big foul. You know, Greg, aggressiveness is really the only option when you're on the wrong side of the size equation. And watching Kimball Walker play, so explosive. An undersized floor general, nasty crossover. Really a scorer's mentality. Maybe too much of a scorer's mentality to ever be a great assist man. Ah, Greg talking about Walker. You have to love the way he competes. His willingness, Clark, to put the team on his shoulders and carry him. Love that competitive spirit of his. They're actually figuring out how to use him best. But he's such a dynamic offensive player. You've got to give him room to be creative at that end. Wide open look. And Jeremy Lamb, the bucket on the assist by Williams. And it's a six-point Charlotte lead. Now here's Beal. He's guarded closer. There's the double team with Lamb. All with it. He's picked up by Walker. Stolen by Walker. And here's the fast break. Walker leading the way. And one of the trademarks of the many best point guards in the league, their ability to score in addition to distribute. So here now, a look at the top scoring point guards this season. Number five is John Wall. And this is a group of guys who have that uncanny knack to simply score and, and put points up while they find ways to get the rest of the team involved. Really, the complete package. And to me, that's what makes them so special. I mean, they don't have one way to punish you offensively. They've got several. You want your point guard to be the most versatile player on the squad, and these guys are. Okay, gentlemen, two shots, two shots. That one falls for Walker. A big dip in performance here for the Hornets last year. In 2014, they were very tough to beat at home, and that was not the case in 2015. Yeah, I mean, they struggled to string together those defensive runs at home, and in the end, that led to their less than stellar record. Kemba Walker hits them both. Probably as close to a sure thing as you can have at the free throw line. Wall dishes to Beal. Back to Wall. Shot to stop the run. Shot is off. Walker with some nice deep. And you know that record for the Hornets last year at home. They ended up going 19 and 22. Six fewer wins than they had in 2014 when they last made the playoffs. Boy, they've gone on this run and ball movement has been a big key. It really has, Clark. The defense unable to react as quickly as necessary in terms of dealing with their passing. Here's Beal. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Williams has got three rebounds now in this one. And getting back to the Hornets, they were the worst shooting team in the league at home. And they have to remedy that in a hurry. Shot only 42% here last season. And here's Sharp. They've got a 12-2 run in progress. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. 
And, and guys, you know, last year Marvin Williams signed a big contract, and he did not follow that up with big production. In fact, he tied a career low in terms of his field goal percentage at only 42, and, and not exactly what the Hornets were expecting from their new stretch four. Zeller, he's checked in for Roy Hibbert. Marcus Thornton, he's checked in for the Wizards. Kimba Walker hits them both. I don't think about Marvin Williams. You know, we know he doesn't create for others. He doesn't generate a lot of blocks or steals. But, you know, the one thing he does, he can hit the boards, he rebounds well, and he's got a pretty good shot from outside. Yeah, and last season he didn't have any big numbers, but the ones that were at least respectable were in the areas you just mentioned, rebounding and three-point shooting, Kevin. Washington calls timeout. Well, nobody really knew, Greg, what to make of Washington going into last year's playoffs. They came out strong with a big sweep against a pretty good Raptors team. Yeah, how about taking them down four straight? And it was the first time a team has swept an opponent without home court advantage since 2011. Also, was the first sweep for the Wizards in franchise history. Mm. Well, we're into the third quarter, just over two and a half minutes played. And Thornton kicks to Beal. Pass to Gortat. Dishes it to Thornton. The Wizards working the ball around now. Shot clock at six. They need this. Gortat misses. And in the second round, the Wizards continued to be a tough opponent. I mean, they went up two to one on the Hawks, but were unable to keep the series lead. A lot of close, heartbreaking losses for them in that series. Really tough for this group right now, trying anything to stop the run. And no matter what they've tried, it hasn't worked. I think they've just got to slow it down, idle it back, and, and get back to the base. Here's Porter, and the officials whistle a foul on the shot. The bucket's good. He'll go to the line. And the Hogs would ultimately take down the Wizards last year in the postseason. John Wall and his injury were a big turning point in that matchup. And, and all those buzzer beaters for both teams made it one of the most interesting series of the postseason. And some changes here for the Hornets. Kaminsky is checked in for Williams. And it's Bellinelli in for Lamb. And the Wizards making a change here as well. Nicholson's checked in and stolen by Thornton. Down low, and he finishes it off with a one-handed jam. And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant offense. Yeah, I remember G.A. as an irritant. And this guy, much like Greg, creating havoc out there. And Gorzak kicks to Porter. That one off the back iron and out. Ill-advised shot there, Clark. Yeah, exactly. That was lower than low percentage. Walker the pass to Kaminsky. Picked by Zeller. Kaminsky dishes to Bellinelli. Shot clock at five. Kaminsky kicks to Walker. And again, the Hornets missing. Wizards trail by seven. Thornton passes to Porter. Nicholson in the post. He's covered by Zeller. They blow the whistle just as he gets it off. That's two points with a chance for another one at the strike. He's doing his best to carry him, fellas, but he can only do so much. Things would be different for them if he was getting a little more help. Jason Smith, he's checked in for the Wizards. Marquise Morris comes in for Beal. And guys, let's get your take on the hustle stats for the Hornets. Defensively, they played with a lot of energy, and the steals we've seen are a result of that aggressiveness. Something that's also benefited them tonight are the turnovers they forced and the points that have come along with those forced turnovers. And that one's good. They've done their part here to run down a lot of missed shots. A solid rebounding effort. Yeah, energy has been the difference, and they're fighting for every loose ball and giving as good as they get on the inside. The leaner inside. From deep, Thornton. Kept the line by Washington. Hornets leading by six. They 
takes a shot at the elbow, and Charlotte again with the bucket. Looked like he was channeling Bob Cousy right there, since when does he take guys off the dribble like that? Washington's gone 0-2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Out to the right wing. Porter with it. He's picked up by Walker. Morris outside. Shot on the wing. The shot is off. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. They've held a 12-point lead earlier. And, and Steve Clifford might not be the most famous <laughs> coach in the NBA, but he has plenty of experience, and everyone in the league knows exactly how well-versed he is as a coach. Thornton against Walker. And the shot is good. The Hornet lead has been cut down now to just eight points with the basket from Thornton. Huge hole in the defense that possession. He didn't waste any time cutting through. And the Hornets call time here. And, and guys, the wheels really fell off in Marcus Thornton's game last year. This was a deadly shooter who averaged over 21 points a game only a few seasons ago. The last season, under double figures at nine for content. And on the topic of Thornton, Greg, last season, he wasn't all bad. He, he did hit you know, a career high 42% of his threes. But the problem is he didn't provide anything else. Yeah, he's an Allen wrench. He's a specialist. I mean, he's never been a great playmaker, rebounder, or defender. His money is made with his jump shot. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? I was able to listen in on what Steve Clifford was going over with his team. The focus of the discussion was getting their offense to run through Zeller. Coaches looking for big things from him throughout the rest of this game on the offensive end. A lot of the scoring burden will fall on him. There's still plenty of basketball left to play, and as we watch how these adjustments play out, Cav, it'll be interesting. Great. Thanks for the report, Doris. The tomb with the steal. Poke loose, and that's out of bounds. Charlotte will retain possession. Here we are in November, and let's see how things are going out east in the early season. Take a look at the Wizards. They're in second, looking to take over the first spot. And, of course, the Hornets. Quite a few spots down the ladder right now. And checking out Charlotte, they've had their chances to kind of separate themselves from the pack this season, but so far, they haven't been able to capitalize on those opportunities. Hey, they're amongst a big group fighting for the bottom few playoff seeds, and that's going to continue all the way through the end of the season. I think they'll get in, but it won't be easy. And the Hornets miss again. Wizards trail by eight. Now Burke, five points in the game. Knocked away. And Wall kicks to Burke. Off target from outside. For Charlotte, they've gotten half their shots to drop in the second half up to this point, going 7 of 14. That's terrific defense right there to prevent from converting in close. It's blocked. Hope they get it there. It's Porter outside. It's good. The assist that time from Burke. Burke's got his fourth assist in this one. Boy, I tell you what, he loves getting looks like that from the three point line. No one near him. That's a warm up jumper for him. Sessions dishes to Zeller. Morris with the block. Out of bounds. Charlotte takes possession. Well, you know your low post players are going to take a lot of trips to the foul. Line. So it helps to have big men who can drain free throws like this group can. Here's Sessions. They set the pick. Pick by Zeller. And the pass to Kaminsky. Takes it from 10. Rebound by the Wizards. No one near Wall as he lets it go. Wall with another miss. No doubt it's been a bit of a struggle for him here in this quarter in terms of scoring. Kid Gilchrist with it. He's picked up by Wall. Picked by Zeller. Sessions passes to Kid Gilchrist. Another miss, and they desperately need a bucket. Wizards trail by five. It's tipped. It's stolen by Sessions. 
it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. And let's review some numbers for Kid Gilchrist. He's putting up 13 points a game, six rebounds, and two assists. And this is the kind of strong, steady play you like to see. He's earning his keep and helping them win games. And guys, they're finally getting the consistency they wanted to see from him. Look for that to continue. All right, now, take a break, take a break. Two shots. First one falls for him. We're still waiting for that first miss from the line this half. 100% since halftime? Come on now. I'm not sure this lead's going away anytime soon with that kind of marksmanship. Here's what Charlotte's going with right now. Roy Hibbert's checked in for Cody Zeller. Williams comes in for Kaminsky. And it's Lamb in there for Nicholas Batum. And Kid Gilchrist drops them both. Wizards trail by seven. And Charlotte's defense, it didn't really start out incredible last season. But, but over the course of the year, they climbed the ranks. And, and by the end of the year, they were a force. Here's Burke. Williams with the block. Hibbert. Charlotte moving the ball around. And he thought he had a clear path to the hoop, but the defense didn't give up on that play and cut him off. Kept alive. Here's Smith. Great tee that time from Hibbert. Charlotte leading by seven. Over to the wing. Wall grabs the board. Wall's got his third rebound on the night. And, Clark, you don't think of too many of the Hornets' as lockdown defenders, MKG being the big one, but they defended well over the entire season. And for them, Kevin, rim protection was a big factor. They were a top-five team in the league in forcing missed shots at their own basket. Williams gets the bucket. What are they thinking, leaving him with all that space out there? Do they not know? Have they not heard that this guy is unbelievable? That's a layup for him. Williams with the steal. And Lamb with a clear path to the hoop. The pull-up. Rebound by the Wizards. Smith's got his eighth rebound here tonight. His shot's just, it's not there right now. With this team leading, perhaps, you know, let's focus on some other areas of the game. Ball, that's good. Not phased at all by having a bigger defender on him down low. And I really thought he would be. You know, at first glance, you wouldn't think that he'd be comfortable in that particular situation. But, well, I tell you what, he didn't look like he was out of his element at all right there. And it's just one of those days, guys. He has just struggled to shoot the basketball. Excellent work there in transition. Yeah, I think it's always better to go early in transition, to attack when it's there, because oftentimes you can beat the defense down the floor. Here's Sessions. Williams, a screen on wall. Here's Sessions. Morris with the block. To the middle. Here's Burke. Leaves it in without an inch of room around him. Burke's got seven points in the game. Those defenders look like they're out of gas. I mean, they're getting pushed around on the low block. Yeah, but they better rally suit because they've given up three straight buckets in the paint. Here's Kid Gilchrist. Tries again, and two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle on a lot of contact there. Wow, wow, he got whacked on that one. Shouldn't be much debate there. Blatant contact, straightforward call, simple. This is his third trip to the free throw line. Numbers this year at the line below 70, so when he's getting to the line, not nearly as effective as he's got. You know, his free throw percentage has dropped this year, but not really enough to raise any red flags or become alarmed about it. Here's what Washington's going with right now. Miami's checked in for Jason Smith. Gortat has come in for Otto Porter Jr. and Beal's subbed in for Burke. He doesn't get the second one. He's been anything but his usual self this morning. It's actually been ugly to see. And Beal kicks to Gortat. He gets stolen by Lamb. And a fast break now for the Hornets. 
Here's Sessions. This is his first chance at the line tonight. And on the season, you know, only shooting around 73%, so not necessarily where he'd like to be. Guys, he is close to where he was last year in that category, but um, his numbers are still down just a skosh. So he comes up empty at the line. Wizards trail by five. A chance here to go two for one. Boy, they've got to ramp up the speed and make it happen in a hurry. And Gorjak kicks to Mahini. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on John Wall. And that's it for him. He's fouled out. Not only that, we are in the bonus, and we'll have to go to the line for two. And the Wizards making a change here. Thornton's checked in. Kemba Walker's checked in for Charlotte. We've got 22 seconds left in the third quarter. Outside Williams. With one on the clock. No good there. And we've reached the end of the third. Hornets lead by five. 2K Sports, back in a moment here at the Time Warner Cable Arena in Charlotte. We welcome you back to what has been a good one here as we get into the fourth quarter. Wizards trail by five. They've got Batum. Jeremy Lamb out there with Kemba Walker. Then it's Roy Hibbert. And it's Williams at the power forward position. So that's the Hornets five. They've had assists now on their last three baskets. And it's not just their passing, but also the body movement off the ball that's created a lot of those opportunities. Walker dishes to Williams. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Washington's gotten a positive outcome on seven of their 14 three-pointers in this game. Not bad at all. Kicks to Thornton. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. Drops for Thornton. And Thornton drops two. Charlotte has gone past the three-point line for 13 of their shots. Six of 13. A two, good. Well, they were sleeping on defense. The defense really didn't do its job. I mean, a little slow to react to the ball getting into the paint. That's costly. And at this stage of a tight game, the tired legs really start to show. A defense becomes vulnerable if you can continue to pound it inside. And Lamb with a clear path to the hoop. Trips down the breakaway slam. And hey guys, that's a big swing right there. I mean, taking the steal and then turning it into two easy points on the dunk. No telling how important that sequence could turn out to be. And guys, in a game this snug, moments like that are the ones we usually look back on at the end as a difference maker. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. A good night for Lamb. 
He's got 11 points, and all the steals he's collected only add to his impressive stat line. <laughs> Whether he's picking someone's pocket or picking off a pass, he has been a disruptive force out on the floor. Quarters checked in for Washington. Trey Burke comes in for Marcus Thornton. And Land drops them both. About a minute and a half through the fourth quarter now. Now, here's Burke, guarded by Walker. And Kemba Walker is going to pick up the foul. That's foul number two for him. That's his second foul. Here is Gorton. it from outside. Beal's got five points now this quarter. A good look there, and he didn't waste it. His second three of the game. We're about two minutes into the fourth quarter in this one. Williams sets a screen for Batum. Five to shoot. It's a floater, and he sinks the layup. And the Hornets lead by six. You know, obviously, he knows how to finish with some flair. Washington's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. He had stolen by Lamb. And a fast break now for the Hornets. That's tipped, and they'll keep possession. Batum wide open. He fires. Lamb soft on the front of the rim and drops. A little over two and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth quarter. Burke, the pass to Beal. Gorchak against Williams. And Gorchak takes to Burke. Back to Gorchak. Takes it from 10. Rebound by Williams. Charlotte leading by 8. On the left block. And Nicholas Batum, the bucket on the assist by Walker. Walker's got his seventh assist here tonight. Wizards have gone 2 of 4 from the field since we started the final quarter of play. There's the double team with Walker. It's Porter outside. The Hornets pull it in. Here's the Hornets with the ball. They're on a 12-3 run right now. Beal on the double team. Walker dishes to Lamb. And he gets the bucket. Lamb's got the lead up to 12 now for the Hornets. They just can't miss. Everything they put up, it seems, goes in. You know, sometimes you're the bug. And sometimes you're the windshield. They are <laughs> certainly the bugs tonight. <laughs> Nothing going their way. And, and, and I'm not even sure that I'd want to be the windshield. No. Uh, maybe the windshield wipe. Yeah. yeah right. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's a tough break for the D. I mean, he took the hit and drew the whistle. Yeah, but he was late to get there, Greg, so the referee couldn't give him a free pass on that one. Wizards making a switch here. Morris has checked in. Hornets leading by nine. Outside, Walker. The dish to land. Williams, a screen on Beal. Here's Lamb. That one a little long. The Wizards have gone three of six from the field so far in the fourth quarter. Porter, no luck. For Charlotte, they've gone six of nine on their field goal attempt since the start of the fourth quarter. Hibbert with the screen, and here's Walker outside. Porter pulls it in. Porter's got his fourth rebound in this one. And Beal kicks to Porter. It's tipped. Lamb with the ball. A three. And Nicholas Batum, good for three. And the Hornets lead by 12. It just seems like the more he touches it, the more the lead grows. Morris passes to Beal. Inside, and so the ball out of bounds. Hibbert touched it last. Well, close to picking that one off. Still a nice play to make sure that pass didn't reach its target. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. 
Roy Hibbert picks one up. Two shots, gentlemen. Two. First one falls for him. So far in the game for Gortat, he has eight points, and he's tacked on a couple of blocks today, too. And they've been important to the team. Even if it's only a couple, it's helped them establish a defensive presence inside. Both free throws, good from Gorchak. Wow, they've made every free throw here in the second half. And that efficiency, Greg, as you know, so critical when you're looking to overcome a deficit. You've got to be close to perfect and can't waste scoring opportunities. Again, the miss by Walker. Wizards trail by 10. And Beal kicks to Mahimi. Nice ball movement by Washington. Got a piece of it and stolen by Hibbert. And now, here's Batum, the fast break opportunity. It's deflected. Washington's gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. And Mahimi has it in the corner. Porter dishes to Villa. Six on the shot clock. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. It's on Nicholas Batum. The thing about Bradley Beal, when he suits up, the entire lineup becomes exponentially more potent. A quick, powerful athlete, Greg, high basketball IQ, uh, you know, had the great teaching at Florida, carries it to the NBA. Opponents have to account for him, I think, on, on both ends of the floor. And that's a great point, Kevin. I mean, coming out of college, a lot of people compared him to Ray Allen. I mean, he, he possesses that next-level smoothness and, and body control that's often indicative of a true difference maker. Marcus Thornton, he's checked in for Markeith Morris. That one misses, so he goes one for two. And, you know, going back to Bradley Beal, the bottom line is he's a winner. Last year, the Wizards went eight and nine with Beal out of the line. Hard to argue with those facts and numbers. And really, the defense fouling there to the prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. It is. I mean, no reason to back off and give him the layup. Too much better off making him go to the line. Shooting two. Shooting two. And that one falls for Hibbert. And when you talk about Bradley Beal, it's not just having him in the lineup that matters. It's having him at his best. When he's at 100% health, there are very few guards in the league who can keep up with him. Truly one of the game's great young talents. Burke, he's checked in for the Wizards. And he can't hit the second. And who has been a greater enigma than Roy Hibbert, a guy who can look like an all-star club one game and an undrafted free agent the next? Yeah, it's pretty amazing the, the kind of swings Roy has had. He's been really good at times. Sometimes he gets in his own way with overthinking things, but I think he's got everything he needs to be an upper-tier center, upper echelon center. Just has lacked consistency the last year or two. Cutting into that lead a little bit. Way to finish. And the basket is still shaking. Oh, I mean, he has got power in bunches on that two hand. Charlotte calls timeout. And on the topic of Hibbert, he was an enigma in college, had a very encouraging junior season, looked like a future lottery pick, and, and then that uninspiring senior season, which kind of dropped his draft stock considerably. You know, going back to Hibbert, last season was a perfect example of what we're talking about in terms of consistency. One game he puts up 22 and 8, the next game 2 and 1. But you know, every team in the league would like to be in the Roy Hibbert game once the light finally goes on and stays on. Consistency, the challenge for Hibbert.
And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. Well, Kevin, Steve Clifford was just going over the game plan with his team. He was propping his guys up for their defensive pressure, saying, listen, the pressure you put on them has been fantastic. Keep pestering them, keep forcing turnovers, and we'll be in a great position to win this thing. Now here's Lamb. Launches it. Rebound by Mahimi. Mahimi's got six rebounds here tonight. Ward's out with the ball. Picked up by Hibbert. Beal the pass to Mahimi. Here's Burke. And misses it off the right side of the rim. Hornets leading by eight. Here's the two. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. That's on Marching Gorchak. When you're hot, you're hot. And that's certainly been the case for Batum. 15 points and two blocks. The fourth quarter he's got going right now has been excellent. And he's really playing with some incredible enthusiasm. And he can't get the second one to drop either. Coming up empty that time. Not a typical trip to the line for him there. He had been knocking them down today. It's Beal on the wing. Or John against Batum. And he gets the bucket. And that's now 11 points for Marching Gortat. I think they need to get much more disruptive defensively. They can't just keep allowing these easy baskets. That's got to be job number one right now. Nothing easy on the inside. Here's Hibbert. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. Nine points for Roy Hibbert. You know, they'll want to generate more of those shots in tight, guys. Wizards trail by eight. Now Burke. Here's Beal. He kicks it to Gorton. And the Wizards getting another bucket right there. That's a clean look they gave him there, fellas, and he drains those. Charlotte has gone outside a lot tonight. 17 times, in fact. 7 of 17. Hibbert with the screen. Here's Lamb. From outside, off the mark. The Wizards have gone 6 of 13, so just above 46% on their field goal attempts here in the court. And that's his fourth, and no doubt he would have liked to have not gotten it this soon. Otto Porter, healing from a family of basketball players. His mom, All-State in 85. His three uncles won state titles. Deep basketball roots. And how about the fact several of his cousins also won state championships, although Otto right is the Take only one in Take the family break. to reach the Two NBA. Shots. And he knocks down the first one. And the Hornets making a change here. Kid Gilchrist has checked in. And so he's able to get one of two. Wizards trail by seven. And here is Burke. The feed to Gorton. To the inside. And he was camped in the lane there, and he gets the three-second call. Hornets leading by seven. You know, getting back to Otto Porter's basketball family, it really prepped him to compete. Your family is the first place you learn to navigate and win battles in competition. That goes for sports and life. Beal with the steal. And here we go. Fast break. Burke's got it. And there's Porter on the assist by Burke. And that's 19 points for Otto Porter Jr. Really opportunistic basketball there. And when they desperately needed timely opportunistic basketball. And it really couldn't have come at a better time. I mean, they've got to take even more chances on defense now. Try to get some more of those steals to start the break. And Lamb kicks to Williams. And he sinks the shot coming off the strong pick. 
And the Hornets lead by seven. And talking about Porter, he certainly has worked hard to improve upon his weaknesses. That's a trait that's often instilled in a man at a young age. And he's not an explosive athlete, but his motor and want to compensate for that. Washington calls timeout. They're sending guys to the line way more than they should here. They need to play good position defense and avoid the reach-in sloppy foul. Wizards trail by seven. Deal with it. There's a good screen. Burke dishes to Mahimi. Nice move. It's good. The assist that time from Burke. Mahimi's got four points this quarter. Yeah, beautiful play on the interior. They're just using the height advantage to lay the ball up and in when they really needed that basket. Walker the pass to Williams. Quarter against Kid Gilchrist. Williams has a screen for Lamb. Down to five on the shot clock. Misses from short range. Now, nice work there to contest the finish inside. You know, they got the shot they wanted, but his defense may deter them from those playing. I mean, I like the call. I thought the defense was just there a little late. Yeah, it looked like it. I mean, he kind of slid underneath as he got to the spot, too. into just four. You really have to like the work they put in at the free throw line here in the half. I mean, they've been really aggressive in drawing foul, and then they've been able to knock down their free throws. Listen, they're still right in this thing. Missing that free throw, though, keeps this a two-possession deficit. It's Kid Gilchrist on the wing. Shot is off, and it's Washington the other way. In transition, here come the Wizards. Beals running. Here's Burke. Three. Looking at the game Burke has been having, he has eight points and six assists. Passing and free throws, those are two areas where you love to get production. And I like the fact that he's been a positive player all day. He hasn't had a lot of errors in the game. He gets them to within one possession, but that miss puts a lot of pressure on their defense. And he gets it to go in. He's had an off game thus far, but his team has been able to pick up the slack and find a way to get it done here. Now, here's Burke, guarded by Walker. Here's Beal. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. He hits the first one, and that shrinks the margin to just four. Nicholas Batum. He's checked in for Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And both free throws good for B. That was essential that he cashed in on those free throws. They're within one possession. Charlotte calls timeout. 
They're ahead by three. One ten left in the fourth quarter. Ten left in the fourth quarter of this one. Picked by Williams. Here's Lamb. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. And that's now 18 points for Lamb. And he came off that screen, and he just didn't get over the top. Yep, weren't there in time enough to challenge Greg. And when that's the case, you can mark those up for him. Here's Batum. Finish off the break. And now it's an eight-point Hornets lead. And really, I like the fact that even with the big lead, they never coast. To me, that's a sign of a really good team, Greg, because you should always be playing against the game and yourself. I know there's an opponent out there, but when you have a lead, it's all about continuing to execute. Do what you do and stay true to that. And I like that aggressiveness and full speed ahead uh, kind of attack that they have. Up top, Walker. Burke covering. Up top, Walker. Lock at six. Looks one up and fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. Going to the line. Kemba Walker. Shooting two. Gets the first, and that increases their lead to six. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a seven-point game. Job well done at the line on that possession. They'll make things a little easier on themselves if they can convert those. Washington calls timeout. They're down by seven. We've got 13 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Guys, your thoughts? You know, I think he's just trying to send his team a message. You know, not willing to give up on this game just yet. Just trying to instill that fight in this group. Yeah, hey, I'm all for giving messages and teaching lessons but and I respect that but at some point if it's over it's over I mean you need to be looking at, at the next one this one's done forget about it let's move on here's Smith sessions with the rebound and so it's Charlotte with the win it was up for grabs right until the final seconds clock. You know what? They showed their character in crunch time, though, doing what had to be done to send these fans home happy. And that about wraps it up. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA, presented by 2K Sports. And now the award-winning Ernie Johnson will take it from here. We'll see you next time. The 2K Sports Postgame Show. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson. Kenny the Jet Smith is here. So is Shaquille O'Neal. Time now for some highlights as we take a look at our Jordan player of the game. Talk about lighting it up in the second quarter. My word, that was just huge. And the impact carried them through the entire game. I can't imagine a player having a better night from the field than he had tonight. His shooting percentage was off the charts. He used every trick in the book to get those high percentage shots. He shot from every direction. And there was a little bit of luck here and there, but he was on fire. Boom, 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 boom. That's right, Ernie. Instruments. This guy was instrumental in the night in making sure they avoided a second straight loss. They needed somebody to step up tonight, and he was their guy. And that'll do it for our broadcast tonight. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, for me and, and Kenny Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kevin Harlan, and the entire 2K Sports crew, have a wonderful evening.